Hello. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Blessings Sunday. In abundance. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. Yes. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Blessings in abundance, everyone. We are coming on this morning for our Sunday live stream. And we're excited about it. Um, We've got a great topic this morning. I'm excited about this topic and excited to share kind of like the backstory to where this topic came up this week and why we're talking about it and excited. So as you come on, say good morning so we can see your name. We're doing a different broadcast this morning. There we hey, go. We hey are actually guys. trying Bye. our new good camera. Good morning, guys. Good and morning. so, oh, it looks great. Yay. Yeah, we're trying a new camera this morning. I tried she, it um, the other you. night. So listen, creative faith. Uh, Pastor Rebecca is going to take the lead this good morning. morning. I'm going to be her, Ellen, uh, Terry, her, her, her background. I'm going to be the background singer today. Good morning. Good morning. We <laughs> see all you guys as you're coming on. Please share as you're coming on. I want to make sure we get it to reach as many people as possible this morning. This subject is really, really good. I'm going to give you a different perspective on your faith this morning, a different perspective on the power of your faith and how to use your faith in action. Um, in order to manifest the life that you truly desire to have. So this is a really, really great topic, especially those of you who are in business, entrepreneurs, yes. or those of you who are just seeking that next level of abundant life. You're seeking some changes in your life. You want some things to, to come into play for you. You know that there's greater for you mm -hmm. and you are looking for the answers and solutions and the, the ways to make that happen. So this morning's going to be really powerful. Um, let me go on and share real quick. Just before that's all. Our, that's, that's all you see me doing over here. I'm sharing. We are sharing. We're sharing on our personal pages real we, quick. Yeah, before well, we, personal and groups we're a part of. We got everybody we're a part of. Right. All right. So, um, but as you come on, we need you to share as well. We are excited about this morning. We're excited about what God is doing. Creative faith is so powerful, and with all that's going on in the world. Many people are losing focus and with faith, especially creative faith, you have to have focus. Okay? All right, guys. So this morning, um, Carrie, what's our scripture we're coming from? Well, uh, you go away. Just talk to a minute and let me finish this part okay. of it. Uh, but the faith, the script, the scripture is going to be right here in Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith yes. is the substance of things hoped for well, and the evidence of things not seen. Say it one more time, preacher. Now. Now, faith. faith. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Is the substance of yes. things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful. Powerful. Because what is that really saying? I wanted to give a realistic perspective of what that really means. Because sometimes what I have found when it comes to being creative having an imagination, mm -hmm. dreaming, believing bigger. We don't often associate these things with faith mm. and how to put our faith in action, in action. Because what happens is, guys, there is so much pressure on you from our society, from our friends, our family. There is so much pressure for you to fit in. Mm. Let me say that again. There is so much pressure for you to fit in because listen, activating your faith and using your creative faith means that you are going to begin to speak those things that are not mm -hmm. as if they are. Mm -hmm. It means you're going to begin to think and speak and believe the things that you know God has for you and where you're going and what's coming for you, you begin to speak these things, believe these things, think on these things, feel these things. It becomes so real for you about what God's doing and about to do in your life that yes. you feel it. It's not just thinking it. It's mm. not just saying it. It's feeling it. So let me ask you a question this morning. If you really, really believe on what God is going to do in your life and you believe in your dreams and you believe in the greater for your life, yes, abundance, how does it make you feel 
when you begin to really think on these things and you begin to like you imagine and see yourself there you mm -hmm. see yourself having the experience you see yourself with the material possessions that you want you see yourself with the financial freedom you see yourself spiritually healed yes. physically healed yes. mentally healed you see yourself living free which means that in and there's a domino effect that this this applies to your entire family mm -hmm. it applies to your children it's literally a domino effect in your life right and if you see yourself living it how does it make you feel the real thing is this most times people are not creating because they're not feeling it to me when i think about creating something i think about joyful if i want to create a cake okay and i want you to guys catch this before you create a bake a cake, you got to make sure you have the ingredients. The reason why many people are not creating is they're not creating the ingredients in their mind, the feeling of it, the smell of it, the taste of it, the reality of it, because as a man think it, so is he. So before you can actually create it, you got to get the rest. You gotta, you gotta, what's the recipe for success? Have you thought about what really you want to do? Have you thought about the natural gifts that God has given you so that when you start creating the faith, it's within the means that you already have? Can I be honest? A lot of people are creating things that is not within their means, meaning it's not part of your uh, destiny. It's not part of your gifts. It's not part of your anything, but because somebody else is doing it or because it may make money. What I've learned is this. If the word of God says that your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men, when you're creating, you're creating within the gift that's inside of you. Okay. You got to use the gift. And then when you do it, I've learned this a long time ago, and you can re relate to this as well. What God has created you to do, if you operate in your pure authenticity, money will come because you're what God has given you with that gift. Don't let money be the thing that leads you. Do it because it's what you love to do. And then as you're creating your reality, it falls within your gifts, within your well-being. And this thing you know, you're not even working. You're doing things you love to do and getting paid for it. That's how creative faith works when you think about what is it in life I want to do? Are you chasing money? Because if you're chasing money, then most of the time your gifts won't line up. But if you're operating within your gifts and create with the faith that God has given you, mm -hmm. what I've learned is things come. Because guess what? You're sending out into the universe what you desire and the, rest, and the ingredients for success comes back. And here's the other flip side. Most believers are so humble that they're afraid to ask for what they really want. Really? We are raised to be humble. We see having big confidence as arrogance. Mm. So guess what we do? The humility causes us to not be bold in our faith, to not say what we want. There's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with wealth. There's nothing wrong with you saying, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire. And then there's nothing wrong with you getting to work putting your gifts to work mm -hmm. and letting God add his super to your natural Come on. for you to be blessed financially. Yep. So many of us as believers are so timid when it comes to talking about finances. We're timid when it comes to talking about money because we don't want to seem like we're stepping out of our position mm -hmm. or we're arrogant or we're vain or, or we're, oh, the, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. No, money is not evil. It says the love of money. Meaning whatever you do to Because get. you're making it a priority yes. over everything else yes. and not the love of God and the love of people because the love of money will cause you to do bad things to get it. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're talking no. about. No, no, no. It is time for God's people to be able to align with prosperity, wealth. This falls in line with abundance. When most of the time when you talk about abundance, most people think about wealth. They think about money and prosperity. Abundance is everything in abundance, peace, love, joy, health, and wealth, and wealth. You can't exclude wealth from being one of the elements That's of right. abundant life. That's now, here's where your creative faith comes into play. It's a double-edged sword. Because you're afraid to open up your mouth and be bold and claim what is yours and where God's taking you mm -hmm. because you're so afraid of how you'll be perceived mm -hmm. by other people. Because you don't speak it, 
Yep. You don't receive it. Was that what's that old saying? Closed mouth doesn't get fed because you don't ask <laughs> for it because you're not even willing to verbalize it. Yeah. Every single six and seven figure stream of income I've ever created, I started from nothing, but I began to say with my mouth, I own a construction company. Mm -hmm. I am a millionaire coach. I am. I began to say it before it was ever manifested. That's it. That's it. And most people, guys, listen, most of us will never step out to say those kind of things because we're so afraid of being judged. Oh, she's, oh, she, oh, she's, you know, she's bragging. She's talking. No, wait a minute. The last time I checked, come on. The last time I checked, all the riches in heaven are not laid up for just the evil people, for people doing bad and no good. Why is it that the people of good intention, pure in heart, who will do the right things with the money, the right things? Well, to be honest with you, the scripture does tell us that the, the wealth of the unjust is laid up is or stored up for the just. Up. Meaning but we have to claim it. Well, well, isn't it kind of like that, un, that unclaimed money that you have? And then all of a sudden there's a there's actually a list. That is a, it's a it's a right. website where you can put your name in and it'll say, yeah, you have money that you haven't claimed, whether it's through a deed, whether it's through uh, bankruptcy, uh, reach, whatever it is, the bank's trying to give you money back. It's the same in the spiritual realm. Many people are not claiming what's rightfully theirs. Health. And you're sitting here Health. allowing, you're, you're getting mad at someone who's using the principle, okay? Yep. Think about it like this, and, and, and it's, it's a great blueprint. In the very beginning of the Bible, the Bible says that God looked over the face of the earth and saw that it was dark and void, the face of the earth, and he said, hmm, hmm, meaning he sent the Holy Spirit out to do reconnaissance. You already said this before. Because he was getting ready to create. Before you create, and everybody hear this, before you can create anything, you got to first see it. See it for what it is and then imagine what you want to see. The word of God lets us know clearly that before God even spoke, he looked over the face and saw darkness and void. Now the canvas is clear for him to paint Whatever it is that he wants. This is cool now. So he then said, hmm, what do I need to see first? Before I can even create, I need some light. So let there be light. He creatively spoke it in his mind. Now it comes from his mind to his mouth. And he says, let there be. Yes. And next thing it says, and it was. Yes. Somehow we go out the window. There we go. It and, was. and it was. Because that is, there's life and death. Mm -hmm. in your tongue yes there's like you are constantly creating constantly mm -hmm. creating by default by default yes it's going to be up to you to decide what are you wanting to create what do you want to see yeah because most oftentimes what happens is that we are influenced by those around us so we don't ever use our creative faith mm -hmm. our creative ability to apply our faith to what we want to see. Yes. Which is why we have to be able to raise up as spiritual warriors, mm -hmm. spiritual believers, to be able to get in place and begin to speak and believe what you desire to see. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. So this is what I like. We titled this creative faith. So if faith is the substance of things hopeful, substance of things, right? The word creative is, is this, relating to or involving the imagination or original ideas. You cannot create if you don't imagine. You One imagine. gift that God has given all like of us, child. that's what I'm going with. We, you ever seen a child that's in there playing and they're going yeah. off and you're like, who in the world is in my house? The child talking to somebody and they got the plane flying, the cars rolling. And you look at them and go, man, they, they having a good time in there. He's, he's really getting down. He's allowed the gift that God has given all of us, imagination, to create the very world he wanted to play in. And watch this. He's a child. How do you think the word of God tells us to come to him like little children? Children. Children have no limitations until we give it to them. Okay, I want you to hear that now. Children have no limitation until we tell them, you can't do that. Boy, you crazy, man. You girl. Be, get real. Get real. Be so realistic. So now you take from them. Right. 
the, the, the creativity called imagination and you put them in a logical world. And the word of God says, it's do like not Christoph. conform to this world, but do what? Be, Be transformed, transformed by the renewing mind. of your mind. And in other words, go back to what you had when you were a child, imagination. Yes. The first thing we do today, watch this. We imagine it, but then because of the logic, we, we, we say, oh, we can't do it. We, yeah. we, we can't do that. I, I can't do that. I, I don't have enough education. That's too much. That's too much. I, you know, I don't even what see people how. Think? How about how, that one? I don't even see how that I could do that. Yes. How could I? Listen, if your dream feels doable, it's not big enough. Come oh. If it doesn't require like God that. for it to manifest, it's not big enough. That's you doing something in your own power. Come on. If it's not so big that when you think about it, it's like, God, I don't even know how, but by faith, mm. I'm believing and trusting you yes. that you are going to manifest this in my life. And all I've got to do is do my part to believe and be opened and aligned with Holy Spirit to take the necessary actions and walk through the doors that you open for me. Mm -hmm. It is my job to stay aligned in spirit, to feel good, yes. feel abundant stay positive think all the right positive abundant thoughts mm -hmm. to stay alive ignore everyone around me that is a naysayer a detractor yeah. anybody pessimistic i was sharing with carrie this morning that one of the things that's happened over the years especially as an entrepreneur is that i literally as i began to have laser sharp focus on my goals your inner circle becomes smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in order to manifest, in order to walk into your God-given destiny, everybody can't have access to you. You can't have people in your, well, is that very realistic? Mm -hmm. What makes you think you can do that? Well, don't you think, wait, what? when is enough enough? It, it, don't you think you keep dreaming bigger and bigger? <laughs> what, well, well, why do you want that? Well, why? Do, who, who told you you mm -hmm. could do that? Who? What makes you think that you, you can do that? Because what happens is most people think small. Most people just, are living small. Did you just small. say that? Come on now. Yes. So what happens is, and then everybody loves to judge you by who you used to be. It, everyone wants to believe that people are capable of changing and growing, except when it comes to the people they're competitive with. So you've got people around you who are competing with you, which is why they don't want to see the new you. They don't want to see the growth. They don't want to believe that God has greater for you. They'll believe it for everybody else. But when it comes to you, they want you to stay in your place. Why? Because they're competitive with you. They feel like, well, I, I don't want her to outgrow me. I don't want her to outstretch me. I don't want her to go beyond where she used to be, which is why they're always wanting to talk about your past. They want to talk about where you used to be. Want to talk about when you were going through your divorce. They want to talk about when you were depressed. They want to talk about when you were partying. They want to talk, but hey, that's not where we're at anymore. Correct. Correct. And so you have gonna have to get tunnel vision and minimize access. I had to let some people in my life know if they're kind of trying to come back to me and gossip about other people, listen, I don't have time for that. So what you're basically saying then, we are responsible to protect what comes into our spirit. Boundaries, mm. spiritual abundant boundaries. If you are not spiritually aligned with where I'm going, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to have these conversations. I don't want to hear you talking about somebody because if you're talking about them, you're probably talking about me. Guess what? I don't got time for it. So what you're saying then basically is if you're going to truly use creative faith, then you're going to have to do some evaluation of who's going to be on board for the next level trip. Everybody because can Because people have a say, oh, you think you're all that now. You moved here. You're driving that. You're working here. But they don't understand the struggles you went through to get there. Now that you've gotten there, you think you're better than everybody. And, and what I've learned is this. Don't let people put their feelings off on you. Thank you. Don't let people make you feel like you're not good enough or you're not worthy enough of the blessings that God has for you. Listen, at the end of the day, I went through so much hell in life to anything that God wants me to enjoy right now, I'm enjoying without Listen. anyone's permission. Why do I say that? Because you'll find out that people will say, well, don't let that go to your head. Oh, you think you, you know, you've changed or you got a big head now because you're living large. No, I don't. 
I'm still humble. I'm still the same person because it, watch this, Rebecca. If you think where I'm at now is living large, then you really don't know what my imagination holds. You're ready for what's Baby, next. this is just the this is the transitional point of crossing over to the side of, of, of what God has, living in other countries, having, you know, maids and servants and butlers in other, in other countries. See, people say, oh, oh, wait a minute. Y'all thinking that large? Yeah. yeah. Why not? See, you, if you listen, the American dream is on your own. That's what I thought. So why can't I have my own dream that's bigger than the American dream? If you are fine with staying where you are, good, okay? And I've come to understand that, Rebecca, some people are happy with life as status quo. And I don't knock that. That's right. But, it's whatever you want yeah. your life to be. But don't judge someone who has bigger dreams, bigger ambitions, bigger goals, and they're working to achieve it. And when they achieve it, watch this, the truth about how you feel about them comes out. Yep. Okay? Because as long as somebody's struggling, oh, they're fine. I got them under my thumb. I know where they are. But the moment you start to rise and start to get your own identity minus them, oh, she too good for me now. He too good for me. Oh, he too good for Vienna sausage. No, I'm not. Let me get good at hunger. I'll crack a can in a minute. But if I can afford a, a filet mignon, and if that's what I want, guess what? And this is, oh, can I say this real good? I remember, Rebecca, when I was pastoring, and I love to work. That's one reason why we have the Pope uh, Agency and Pope Various uh, uh, um, ALP, the Abundant Life Path, all the universities, all things. We have our own streams of income. You know why? Because the first thing that people want to say that contributes, and I always say at the end, please bless the Way Life Center, is, oh, our money bought them that car. Our money paying their house note. Our money, right. so I ain't giving to them. They got it. Why is it that you think because we have nice things that we didn't work hard to get it? See, creative faith allowed us to create the strings of income in order to live the life we desire to live. And anything that we say comes towards the towards uh, the way life's and it goes there. I'm saying this for a reason. When you do you worry about what um, where your taxes are going when you pay them? Do you worry about where this is that is going? People have a tendency when they see people growing. And I'm not just talking about us, but anyone else. Anybody. When you see anyone growing, you should be like, Yay. I'm next. Thank you. I That's got it. next. That's what I'm saying. I got next. It's Be like excited for people. See, see what it boiled down to is this. They're now celebrating their success and their hard work. I'm not a hater. I'm a cheerleader because guess what that means for me? I'm next. And when my time comes, I want the same for you. That's right. But as a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you was a hater on someone else, yep. guess what's going to happen when you arrive? You're going to get a bunch of hater raid because, and you're going to get it worse. So what are we saying? Creative faith means get back to the originality of your imagination. See it before you speak it. Watch this. If you speak negativity, Rebecca, guess what you're going to get? Negativity. I didn't ask for this. Really? You sowed it into somebody else's life. Or you're sitting there pondering it in your mind all the time. Mm -hmm. I hope that. I hope I, I hope this doesn't happen. I, I hope I don't get laid off. I see anybody else getting laid Listen, off. Yeah. It, it's, it is time to come dream on, come on, come bigger. On. It's time to dream bigger. Yes. I, Carrie and I were talking this morning, and he was talking about how happy he is. And I said, you deserve it. Listen, for those of us who have been through hell and high water, to get to this side of life to where when life starts to get good, mm. you deserve it. Let's let's by, by the hands you deserve of it. by the hands of that's me. Those of you that have been going through hell that people don't even know about, Listen. type in the screen, that's me, because we're gonna applaud I you right it. now. Oh. I deserve it. So come on, I wanna see. If you know that you know that you know that there have been times you've gone without, there's been times yes. you've loaned your last to people when you need it for yourself, and there's been times that you knew that you was at wit's oh, end of throwing in the towel, but yet, but as I said, but God, 
And now or how about you buried every single f person in your family? You've gone without, you've sacrificed to build businesses, you've mm. sacrificed to raise children. You've had to be the, the lone wolf, the black sheep in your family because you're the only one who's who has sought healing and therapy yes. and counseling come on, come on. and reading books and working on yourself. So you're ostracized because you're the one who decides to step out and heal toxic wounds. They're saying it. That's me. Come on. Right? Listen, so what? it's not easy. No. This path, this abundant life path is not easy, you guys. You're going to be alone. You're going to be isolated at times. But you deserve everything you begin to manifest on the other side of you renewing your mind, renewing your behavior, renewing your mouth. Mm. Everything that you begin to receive, you deserve it. And let me say what I'm hearing in the spirit right now. And I want to free somebody. Because someone is saying, but I did this and I'm reaping what I sown. Okay, listen to me very carefully. God doesn't keep track record of your rights and wrongs. If God puts your stuff in the sea of forgetfulness, then you're the one that's remembering. You're the one that's buying into the mindset that I'm being punished. No, no, no. Because if because that's the case, then we might as well go ahead and just be done. What I've learned is this. This is how I love about God. He doesn't keep track records of your wrongs. You can say, God, forgive me for what I've done. I'm sorry. I, I'm working on being better. And guess what? Like a free gone. throw. It's gone. It's you who allow yourself to get beat down of your past. It's you who's allowing people to tell you that, you know, God is punishing you. You know, it's like with Job. When Job was, was really a great man, his friend said, well, you had to do something, Joseph. Job, you had to do something to deserve this. And Job said, uh, no. Nope. I don't care if you did do something. If you are godly sorry for your actions, it's gone. it's gone. And don't you allow, thank you, Holy Ghost, don't you allow anyone to keep you in a box that God never created for you. Put your past in the box and live. And I'm going to tell you what happened. When you start getting blessed, and I got to go there, I got to go there. Some of these holier than thou people who are really low down gangsters in the spirit who've been dogging you out and talking about you, the reason why you're going to rise above them is you're like the... Like the, like the word of God, you hit yourself in the chest and say, oh, whoa, me a sinner. God, forgive me. Meaning I acknowledge who I am, but I know he's a, that he's a changer. Because you got some, some superficial people that are so holy that look down on you and keep you down beneath them. You when waiting. God is actually elevating the sinner, sometimes over the saint, because the saint won't acknowledge. I wish somebody hear the Holy Spirit the this morning. Shall be last and the last That's shall it. Be first. So today, I loose that mindset from you that I'm being punished or I'm getting payback. No, baby. If you say, God, forgive me. As a matter of fact, if you haven't said it, say it again. God, forgive me of that sin. I give it to you and I receive your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace. It's done. Gone. Grace covers it. Somebody better hear me. I don't care if you had an abortion, a child out of wedlock, if you That's cheated, right. if you lied, if you stole, whatever it may be, ask God to forgive you and live. Grace. If you choose to keep that mindset, you're only taking it from the creative mindset and you created a prison cell. You know what? Some, you know that game the kids play called Mind Block? Is it called Mind Block? I don't know. Is, is Mind Block? Mind, yeah, I think it's called Mind Block. The kids play downstairs, the kids play. But they're creating their world with their mind. Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. What is it called? Um, Minecraft. Minecraft. Yeah. Minecraft. They're creating a world. With their mind, they're crafting a world. Here's my house. Here's my car. And then that pool. And guess what? In this world, they're not worried about who's thinking about them. Mm -hmm. What do you say? They're not saying, oh, me, I did it wrong. I can't create. No, boo boo. You have in your it's hand the tool, which is it, it was, bigger. They use a mouse. Eight. They create click, 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 click. I don't like that. Erase it. What are you saying, Carrie? You hold in your power the ability to erase that. That is not what you want in your world. And to create that that you do. Yep. Go ahead, Rebecca. I feel and Minecraft. One of, and one of the tactics of the enemy is to constantly keep you living Minecraft. in the past. Mm -hmm. Constantly keep you living in the past. If if the enemy can, this battlefield of your mind, if the enemy can get, get you to constantly be consumed with your thoughts of the past and everything that happened and used to happen Come on. and what they what they said to you and what you said and and what you did in return it, and it's this con <laughs> guess what this is the only place it exists 
Did you just say it that? It doesn't exist anywhere else Come except on. in your mind. In your it is mind. now a figment of your imagination. Yes. Because if because right now faith means it's gone. Hmm. There's no record of it. So the only place it exists is here. And that is the number one tactic of the enemy to keep you stuck and to keep you from believing bigger, dreaming bigger, yes. and using your faith to create new mm. life is to keep your creative juices continuing to create old things. Come on. Because Come if on. all you do is think about the past, you're just creating more of the same, yeah. more of the same, yeah. more of the same. New people can come along, new opportunities can come along, but your old stinking thinking just keeps creating the same thing again and again. Different face, it is time same spirit. to renew your mind. It's time to dream bigger. I want you to write down five things today on a piece of paper that you want to see manifest in the next year. Why write down you? five got, wait, things. Hold on, hold on, hold on, baby. This is June. Honey, listen. I still got there, another seven months to go this, this year. year. I said, said in the year. next 365 days. Uh, listen, let me tell you something I've learned about manifestation. One of the things I've learned is that impatience will cause you to give up on your dream. Mm. There's some of you who have been through so much and the process of healing your mind and learning to believe bigger, dream bigger and think right. It's a process. Mm. The unraveling of all of your toxic patterns and cultural and all yes. of the it's a process. Yes. There's there it's gonna take some things that you want to see manifest 365 days before you begin to see this thing turn around. Mm. But you've got to do the work now of beginning to sow the new seeds come on, so that come you on. can bear new fruit one year from now. So your life can be complete. I tell every single one of my VIP coaching clients that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, I said, this isn't going to be done in three months. See, humans are impatient. Mm. I said, I need a year of your life. One year from today, the first time we're talking, your whole life is going to turn around. But I need a year. So let's think about this. And what you're saying is actually true. I'm not saying you were lying, but, but I'm going somewhere with this. When a farmer is going to plant and harvest, there's four seasons. That's right. He starts the one season by tilling the ground. I mean, he's yeah. got to tear up what the was hard there. thing that was there, right? He tears it up, and then he prepares it for a seed. He now plants the seed, which is a thought. And the same day you plant the seed is not when you harvest the no, food. No, 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 no. You have to plant the seed. Yeah, so watch it. So he covers the seed up. And he what? Knows Waters. that, it ha say it again. Water. He has to water it. Meaning you have to read things, talk things, reinforce say things, it, reinforce it. it. God, yes. I believe you. I'm thanking you in That's advance watering it. Yes. for this promotion. I'm thanking you in advance. God, yes. I know you're working it out right now. Yes. God, I thank you. You don't even keep asking. You keep believing and affirming. And so, and watering it. And watch this here. So now you see this little Liam Bud come up. But what happens with most people before the shoe even starts to come up out of the ground, you start to feel like it's not happening. But 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 it's, now, it's not happening. But even when you see the shoot, it's still no, happening. But guess no. what we want? Before it even starts to come up, oh, yeah. you start to give up. Well, this is yeah. this is where even right now, some of you have begin to began to sow seeds and you've been sowing and sowing. Don't give up, don't stop, because oftentimes it's right before. It, you begin to manifest the evidence of your faith is when it becomes the hardest. You feel like you want to give up. Yeah, but here's the problem. You can watch this part because I'm on stage two. I'm going to stage three. You see it coming up, but now you got to let it grow. Many of you want to harvest <laughs> the little baby plant. The little baby plant. I'm going to go somewhere, and I'm, I'm almost a step forward. Like our watermelon. That's where I want to go. I bought some watermelons this weekend. Now, I'm old school. I know how watermelon is supposed to be. And yeah. I'm looking at the watermelon, and I'm seeing the little pigtail as green as it can be and cut to the point where it's got thread coming from it, which says it was still growing. Watch this. But because somebody wanted to make a profit, they took it before it was finished because they couldn't yep. wait on the manifestation of its fullness. Like, I'm going to sell these watermelons right now. They ain't ripe yet. Come on. They're not ready yet. Come on. But I want to make some money from this watermelon. So can I go there? So even though God did say this is your mate, 
Maybe he wasn't yet finished grooming them and growing them for you to say, I do. So you cut the thing, put a ring on it, got married, and now it's still having to write, but now at your expense. Why did I go there, Holy Ghost? Because you were impatient. Because you were impatient. You go and get a job too soon versus let it ripe itself. You start a business too soon. You got to let it ripe because the stage four is harvest. Yeah. Harvest means now it's ready for the picking. Watch this. When you allow God to do what he's doing, you won't have just one job to choose from. You'll have a harvest to That's choose right, from, man. and you can choose, do I want to work here? Do I want to work there? Do I want to start this business? Because now the real work, Rebecca, truth be told, is not in the sowing, it's in the harvest. Yep. Because you got a certain, oh, Holy Ghost, there's a certain time that you have to harvest what you planted and it's yes. grown or it will go bad. Some of you waited too late to harvest what God produced, so you got it while it was rotten going, God, you gave me this? No, when it's harvest, he says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few because they gave up, because they threw in the towel. God is saying, if you just remain patient, yes. the creative faith that you've used, mm -hmm. if you let it grow, if you let it ripe, why till the ground? Why plant a seed? Why water it only to jump on it before it's ripe? Mm -hmm. Or to do all that and let it get ripe, but you're too busy doing something that he didn't ordain you to do, that you let what he called you to do now ruin. Stay focused is what I hear the Holy Ghost saying this morning. Mm -hmm. Creative faith calls for focus patience and getting rid of people who don't understand the mindset of what it takes amen Ooh. all right rebecca we got another what, seven minutes eight minutes and one of the things that's really crucial if you are an <laughs> entrepreneur I, I hear this all the time when we're mentoring coaches and entrepreneurs a lot of people have a very get rich quick mentality Ooh. there's a there people want to be able to sow the seed and reap in the same season so what happens is mm. I listen to entrepreneurs and it's and it's a get rich quick scheme. Mm. It's like they see themselves going from where they're at to millions overnight. Anything worth having is exactly. going to take time. Yes. You listen, stop trying to treat what God wants to do in your life like some quick get rich scheme. Like you're going to somehow come up so fast on that husband, that wife, that, 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 that miracle, your healing. It's a process. Wow. God is growing you and developing you Thank in you. the process of your miracle, in the process of, of your dream manifesting. He's preparing you for the dream. And without the processing, you won't be ready to receive what he's got for you. Mm. So stop trying to rush it. Stop trying to make it happen so fast. I listen to entrepreneurs and business people all the time. And it's like, oh, I'm going to sell thousands of this. Honey, you ain't sold one yet. How are you going to sell thousands and you haven't sold one yet? Take baby steps. Be patient with yourself and your process. Yes. It is so important that you take the time to cultivate the mind and the spirit of where you're going. Then you'll yes. be mature enough spiritually, mm. mentally, to be able to maintain that thing when God brings it. Because yeah. that's what's so crucial. You don't want to get something prematurely and then you're not even ready for the blessing. What did you just say? not ready can you say that again so it's important that you understand <laughs> it's time to believe bigger yes it's time to use your faith yes to create what you really want to see manifest yes if i asked you right now what do you want to see manifest in your life that you maybe have been too afraid or too too humble to even ask for publicly openly right now in the comments I want you to say something that you want to manifest in your life in the next 365 days. Mm -hmm. I want you to put something in the comments. I don't want it to be realistic. I want it to be so big. I want it to be something that without God, it's impossible. Right this second, there you don't even see how it would be possible right now in this second. Mm. In the comments, post by faith by faith what is going to begin to manifest in your life mm. in the next 365 days what are you asking for what do you want to see that you don't see right now how do you want your life to change what are you willing to step out on by faith and say i can't see it with my eyes rebecca 
I can't see it. It's not evident right now. I can't see it. It's not real to my eyes. Terry says, writing best-selling books, writing best-selling books. Yolanda, my million pound home and coaching business over there in London, sweetheart. That's Amen. Right. That's right. right. It doesn't even seem possible right now. Because it's not for right now. Because it's not in your <laughs> own strength. It's not in your own strength. That's right. God is going to add his super to your natural. My radio station, full force, number one in the market. Keisha, millionaire money and abundant love. Amen. By faith. Yeah. Step yeah. out on faith. Put it in the comments. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I feel some of you, it's nervous to even write it. Doesn't it make you feel nervous to even write it, to put it out there? That's what we're talking about this morning. Beginning to step out, even when you feel shaky, even when you feel like, oh, it's so big. I don't know. You know, I don't want anybody to judge me. I, I'm afraid to even ask for it. I'm afraid to even put it out there because what if it doesn't happen? What if that is the fears that keep you from stepping into the boldness yeah. to create what you will really want? Yeah. Crystal, new million dollar home. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Step out by faith. Ren, I want to have a business that will allow me to fulfill purpose and support myself with at least the salary I make at my job so I can leave within a year. Amen. Yeah, Full-time right. entrepreneurship is what Corinne just said. Yeah. Full-time entrepreneurship. Yeah. Go ahead, Bing. So one of the things that we talked about, and we put this out a while back and got it brought back to my uh, memory, we call it the five principles to success. The five principles of success is first what, Rebecca? Imagination. Imagination. You got to be which able to imagine creative. it. You got to create it here first. After you create it, then what, Rebecca? Visualization. Meaning, now you create it, see it. As I said, God said, he thought about it, he saw it, and then he done number three. And this is the third thing that's important, meditation. You got to get quiet. You got to get focused. You got to tune out everything else around you. You got to imagine it. You got to visualize it. You got to meditate. But then here's the fourth one. Affirmation. Affirmation. Affirm it with your mouth. Yes. Affirm it, affirm it, affirm it. I tell a story all of the time with our entrepreneurs and coaches that I created a construction company laying on the floor, crying my eyes out Come before on. God because I didn't know how I was going to feed my kids. My car was about to get repossessed and God dropped a vision of a construction company into my spirit. I literally, all I could afford in that moment at that time was a business card. Okay. Remember uh, Vistaprint, mm -hmm. like little ten dollar yeah. business yeah. cards, you guys. Yeah. It's all I could afford, and I got a business card that said Rebecca Lynn, President, RL Construction Supply. Within three years, mm -hmm. from just a business card, that company was making seven figures. Mm -hmm. Within three years, uh -huh. from nothing to seven figures, simply by believing, seeing, visualizing, and affirming it. And then you got the because last, I began yeah. to tell everybody I own a construction company. All I had was a business card. But you had, come and on. I said I own a construction. What do you do? I own a construction company. Oh, what what are you doing? Well, I'm I'm going to be contracting and doing this. Next thing you know, I was in the islands exporting materials down into the islands. One thing just led to the next because I was bold enough to open my mouth and say I own a construction company uh -huh. when all it was was the initial dream in my head. Because you went through the steps, and your last step was manifestation. Manifestation. When you, when you imagine it, visualize it, meditate upon it, and affirm it, you will manifest. Manifest. Now, here's the thing, and we're going to really close. That also works if you've been imagining negativity, visualizing negativity, meditating on negativity. Affirming, affirming negativity, negativity with your words. And then when it happens... That's the five steps. Those five steps always. In one way or the other. They will always happen. Say it again, Rebecca. One, one way, way or, the, or other. the other. You get to choose. Yes. Are you sowing what you really want to see manifest? Yes. Or are you, are you choosing to continue yes. to focus on what you don't want to see? Yes. Which means you keep getting more of it. That's it. And we'll post that later. But you really got to make sure that you take control of your thoughts. Believe because bigger. creative faith. You always are creating, even in your sleep. Your spirit man never sleeps. You're always creating. So make sure you're creating positive, not negative. Yeah. 
That's right. All right. Rebecca, you want to close us out? Great post All links? right. I love you guys. Blessings in abundance. Thank you for tuning in for the love stream. We are now at our time where you can give any love offering, donation, partnering with us to sew in. We, As you can see, we're buying more. Uh, cameras and lighting and everything to take our broadcast to the next level. Mm -hmm. There's a link up above to give through PayPal. You can also give through Cash App at the Way Life Center. That's the Way Life Center on Cash App. And Carrie is posting in our PayPal link as well here in the comments, but it is pinned at the top of the page above the video. We love you guys. Blessings and abundance. Let's make it an incredible week. Let's stay focused. Let's execute. Let's believe bigger. Use our faith to create exactly yes. what it is. Listen, some of you have a dream that is so big and the calling on your life is so much is so big compared to where you've been that sometimes it's hard for you to believe those previews that God gives you of a coming attraction, those little visions that he gives you where mm. you see yourself doing greater and bigger things. That is God sowing in you to believe and see where you're going. Don't deny it. Come into agreement with it. Yes. Come into agreement with what, with what God is trying to do in your life. He uses those of us, the most humble, those of us who have been through all hell and high water. He uses us because we'll still give God all of the glory. Yes. Because of everything we've gone through. Yes. We'll always give him the glory. Mm. And that's who he's looking for. So your past does not disqualify you. It actually qualifies you Hallelujah. to do God's work. Don't Hallelujah. disqualify yourself for where he's taking you and what he's getting ready to do in your life. We love you. Mwah. We'll close this out in prayer. You go ahead. Father God, we thank you for this message. Thank you for this word to your people. Create a faith. Now, God, we're going to apply what we've learned today, what we've heard today. We're going to take control of our thoughts, and we're going to make sure that as a man thinketh, which we are thinking, we're going to be just that, creative, powerful. We're going to have businesses, homes, the things that uh, the viewers have listed this morning. We speak and we touch and agree with them. Now, Father, we go. We ask that you continue to bless this week. Let us have a productive week, a productive day. Bless us, we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. All right. Love you as well. Blessings and abundance to all until um, tomorrow night. We have what for the, what I got tomorrow? Oh, coaches. No, you don't have I don't know with them. But no, coaches. that's in the circle. I work so that's much. Not uh, I, okay. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> I just do. All right, guys. Love you much. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye. -bye. Now.